We have a couple interesting climate stories to cover. Our first here is from the Washington Post that talks about the uh, slow movement and stalling of some hurricanes and how that's becoming more frequent over the last several decades. We'll bring in Brett Anderson to talk about that. And it's really interesting, especially because some of the recent storms in, in decades, like uh, Harvey in 2017, yeah. and uh, even just the uh, rain from Helene uh, yeah. just uh, about a month ago. Yeah, we're seeing a 10% decrease in the forward speed of tropical cyclones making landfall along the U.S. coastline uh, since the uh, mid-1940s. Uh, also, stalling storms are becoming more frequent, storms that just completely stop and go nowhere, 1.5% uh, increase per year since uh, the mid-1960s. So that's two big things right there. What has this resulted in? This has resulted in a 37% increase in heavy rainfall events across the southeastern United States. Do we have an understanding of sort of why these, uh, or why this slow movement is, is becoming more frequent? Yeah, I mean, one possible explanation for this is the warming of the Arctic. The Arctic's been warming two to three times faster than the rest of the planet. So when you see that, you're getting less temperature difference between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes. Well, a strong jet stream needs a strong, uh, tight temperature gradient. And with less temperature gradient between the north and the south, the jet streams are weaker. Weaker jet streams mean slower moving storms. Yeah, and one of the really big risks from slow moving storms is the flooding rainfall that can occur because the storm sits over the same place for yeah. days on end. That happened in Harvey in 2017 and Allison in 2001, which was only a tropical storm in Texas. And that's one of the reasons AccuWeather developed the real impact scale for hurricanes, where we're uh, communicating the risks of not just the wind that the Saffir Simpson scale does, but also the impacts of storm surge and the flooding rainfall uh, that comes with these storms that really causes the significant impacts. With that, we'll transition to our second story from the Imperial College of London that talks about how climate change uh, could have impacted Milton and Milton's impacts. So there's a, uh, it's hard to say that any one storm is caused by climate change, but there's more and more science now that talks about how climate change has enhanced the risks from a given storm. Yeah, so we're getting more powerful computer models to help us get these answers. Uh, also, you need to do your homework and look back in the past, way back in the past, and compare uh, the strength of storms way back when, the, the frequency of these storms, and compare to what's going on now. And this helps us give answers to what's going on and how climate change may be impacting storms. So what we found, uh, major hurricanes, at least in this study, they found that major hurricanes like Milton in the Gulf of Mexico uh, are now 40% more common than what they were in pre-industrial times. Also, 45% of the damage caused economic losses, I should say, by a storm like Milton are now being attributed to climate change. Yeah, significantly more. Obviously, the exposure from people is significantly higher today. A lot right. more vulnerable people along a coastline because of the building that we have done in some of these impacted areas. You can get more climate stories and information at www.accuweather.com climate.